McRae really starting the defense of his title by moving into sixth. And the Manufacturers' Championship, Ford with a 10-point lead over Peugeot. Round three now takes the championship back into the forests for the Welsh International. The forests of Wales, country that over the years has served the top Scandinavians well. Hanu Mikola, double winner in 78 and 79 in the Ford Escort. Bjorn Valdegaard on the tarmac sections of Epint en route to victory in 82. Dick Blomquist, the winner the following year. And Malcolm Wilson in the Audi Quattro scored British success in 1985, matched by Russell Brooks in 87. But Hanu Mikola's victories spanned a decade. He won in 84 and again in 86, the swan song of the Group B cars. The year when David Llewellyn, desperate for a home victory, hounded Mikola right through the final day until a mistake in the rain saw him launch the car from high off a hillside to a riverbank below, from where he and co-driver Phil Short were lucky to emerge unscathed. We were still on the wheels coming down across the, uh, across the bank there, um, but I could see it was going to end up in a pretty uh, big accident. So when we hit the, the road here, then it started going end over end. Actually landed on its roof, did it? Yes, the boys have actually just tipped it over to see whether they can drag it out for me to, to take it home yeah. in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Llewellyn's next competitive stage on the Welsh International was therefore the following year. The opening spectator stage in 1987, now at the wheel of the Audi Quattro, still with Phil Short alongside him and still a little over-anxious for Welsh success. Auspicious start from which Llewellyn recovered, but plagued by ignition problems, he was never able to get into a really challenging position. And here on the famous Esca David horror stage, a puncture is finally putting pay to his hopes of becoming the first Welsh winner of the Welsh International for 21 years. But he'd be in there battling in 1988, round three of the Shell Oils Open Championship, the Fram Filters Welsh International. change of character for the 1988 Welsh, no epin tarmac stages, so two days of just dusty forest to contend with. Penti Auricula, the championship leader, setting the pace, Llewellyn in the Audi 200 Quattro, not far behind. On the faster stages like this, the advantage certainly seemed to be with the Mitsubishi against the heavier Audi. But Llewellyn in just the position he wanted to be, a position from which to challenge for his first victory on his home event. Fourth place, McRae, just 15 seconds off the lead. Malcolm Wilson in sixth, the head of Grundle's Peugeot, and the new partnership with co-driver Ian Grinrod now working extremely well. Wilson soon had to force his way past the Mazda of Sundstrom to take fourth. Sundstrom would exit overnight with a blown turbo. Callie Grundle in seventh, plagued at this point with an overheating problem, but Grundle still staying ahead of the Sierra Cosworth of Phil Collins. Colin still having a good steady drive. A couple of wrong tyre choices have prevented him from making a more concerted attack, but things still looking pretty exciting from the back seat. Louise Aitken Walker here in the Peugeot was just outside the top 10 and would establish herself among the top runners overnight. And apparently taking charge overnight to the delight of the home support, David Llewellyn. Llewellyn went ahead as Auricula hit temporary gearbox problems. Now here on the long Haffron stage, Llewellyn was 26 seconds ahead and the event had only 42 more miles left to run. Could this at last be Llewellyn's long-awaited home victory? Auricula with his gearbox sorted gives chase, but the Audi seems to hold all the advantages.
circular clearly attacking and then high on the mountainside Llewellyn hits an enormous problem. The leader rolled and he'll now need the spectators help to get back in the event. Auricula takes the lead, Jimmy McRae seemingly promoted to second, but at this point unaware of the disaster that's befallen Llewellyn. But a spectator warns McRae of the problem around the next corner. Let's watch that again. It seemed that Llewellyn clipped a pile of logs on an awkward, slippery corner and just couldn't keep the heavy Audi together. Onto his roof, a burst of flame, but the spectators got the car back on its wheels by the time McRae arrived right behind him. The Audi pouring tire smoke and dust into the windscreen of the Open Champion, Llewellyn carrying on, but how much further can he get? Well, the answer is not very far. Emergency service at the end of the stage reveals a bent subframe along with the rest of the damage. Llewellyn's Welsh challenge is over, heartbreakingly close to victory. Well, it was just um, a, a patch of mud over a crest. I mean, it was a very slight corner. And uh, with the car being quite heavy, uh, when you hit a piece of mud, of course, uh, the weight just takes it off. And uh, we just hit a pile of logs on the outside and just sort of rode over them and went upside down just after. It damaged the subframe, bent it too badly for the boys to repair. They did try desperately for a quarter of an hour to try and keep us going, but, uh, but they failed. I've wanted to do well on the Welsh for the last five years. Five years, so uh, um, um, it just just doesn't treat me well, Wales at all. Nobody wanted to take any more risks as the rain came down, especially not Penty Auricula, almost a minute in front and heading for his second victory of the season. Equally, Jimmy McRae happy to settle for the runners-up spot after his victory in the last round. The surprising speed of the two-liter Astra, giving Malcolm Wilson third spot after his third place in Ireland. Then a splendid fourth on his first contest in Wales, Torbjorn Edling. But having to fight all the way for fifth, Phil Collins. Now try not to think about the drop on the left as you watch the moment that Collins has here. Collins surviving to confirm a fifth place that was very hard earned indeed. Lovell sixth and maybe a little disappointed with that by the end he dropped almost a minute behind Collins. Seventh place a fine result after her earlier problems Louise Aitken Walker in the Peugeot. And taking eighth despite a small spin four stages from home Dave Metcalf Astra GTE. Forcing his way into ninth to take Group N honours Gwyndaf Evans. Making up the top 10, the cadet GSI of Mats Jonsson. Haugland, the top Skoda, but no class honours. The up to 1300cc class was taken by Colin McRae in the Nova. But overall success, once again, went to Penti Auricula in the Mitsubishi Starion. <laughs> Congratulations, Penty. Well done. Penty, co-driven as ever by Ronan McNamee. Dab hands at the champagne now as they record their second win of the season. The Mitsubishi, after the success in Yorkshire, proving it's no fluke in Wales. Penty's winning margin, 28 seconds over Jimmy McRae. And Malcolm Wilson, his second third place in successive events. Drivers' Championship shows Auricula with a commanding 14-point lead over Louise Aitken Walker, with McRae another seven points back, Dave Metcalf fourth, Phil Collins fifth. And it's Ford's Manufacturers' Championship.